Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and Phaser 3.17 was released. The first release in a couple of months now of what is, I think I can safely say, my favorite 2D HTML5 frameworks. And that's exactly what Phaser is. It's an open source uh, 2D framework for creating games using uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, and so on that run in the browser. And it is an excellent framework. Phaser 3 is an update on, predictably enough, Phaser 2. It completely redid the internals and the structure of how things have been done, and each release has brought more and more functionality into the fold. What we're seeing with Freezer 3.17, uh, what you can see on screen right now is one of the examples. What that is, is a GLSL or a WebGL shader running. Now, you've always been able to do shaders in Phaser, but it's always also been a bit of a pain in the ass. That is not true anymore. This is a new shader object. It's very simple to create. Uh, you can treat it like any other object. That means you can translate it, move it around, and so on in your game. So it makes using shaders in your games a whole lot simpler. So that's definitely a nice improvement. The next demonstration we're going to show, and by the way, there are several more shader demonstrations. This is just the one I chose to highlight. Next up, we have the new DOM object. Now, this doesn't look that sexy, but it is very, very useful. Now, DOM stands for doc, uh, Document Object Model, and it's basically the programming interface of your browser. It's a complete mess. DOMs are a nightmare for the most part, but they're also how you do things like add a text box to a screen programmatically. This is the internal structure of a web page inside your browser. Now, when you're working with a WebGL game, you don't often work with the DOM. You're working side by side with it. You're creating a canvas and working on that canvas. But in this case, sometimes you want to actually have access to the DOM for like you can see in this particular example, if you want to create a login screen, you want to use traditional CSS or HTML5 on top of your web page, that is exactly what the new DOM game object allows you to do. Basically, you can uh, create a little HTML5 applet of sorts that can run on top of your application using the traditional DOM uh, uh, from the browser. So it allows you to do things like create these login forms that you can put over top of your display. So if I do a reload, you see there's a bit of an animation going on with how it is done. So that is definitely some handy new functionality as well. Now, the next marquee feature of this release is the um, camera masking. Now, camera masks, like you can see the circling around the outside edge. It's for doing certain special effects with your camera. And here what they've done is they've created a um, kind of an opaque circular mask around the outside of the camera. So if I hold the arrow keys around, you'll see it is automatically moving and updating with the camera. So um, camera masks were added in this particular release. Now, those are the marquee features. Those are the big highlights of 3.17. Uh, but there is more to this particular release. Now, this is the, uh, the release notes. I will link this in the link down below uh, or the linked link down below. Again, it's phaser 3.170. Now we've highlighted a couple of these things already. The shader game object and base shader display object were added. Uh, you can see an example of how easy they are to use. Basically, it loads your GLSL fragment shader here and then create a new shader object and you are done. Like I said, there are a several different, about six or seven different shader examples you can go in and play with, like the one we just saw earlier on. There is the new DOM elements. You can create a DOM container just by passing in this property here in your configuration. And then it enables you to add DOM elements directly on top. So here they are creating a 220 pixel wide, 100 pixel high lime green box that you can then you know display text in or whatever. Uh, we saw the camera masks in action. It allows you to do things like frame your camera with different special effects. And then there are several other features here as well. Arcade Physics received handy new methods uh, to get all the bodies in a given region. Uh, overlap Tile Method, which lets you check a body against an array of specific tiles. Um, now, if you go, there is full-blown details here in the change log. So if you want to see everything that was in this release, drill down into that change log for more details. But we got the top level stuff. You're going to see there is a lot more going on in this particular release, uh, as you can see by this. But the rest of it, it it's more smaller stuff, smaller features, or, uh, you know, less Let's highlight worthy stuff. So there is, as you can see here though, a number of new changes in Phaser 3.17.0. So if you are definitely upgrading from 3.16 or earlier, you're gonna wanna check out the full change notes to see what all is actually changed in this release. There's definitely more than the marquee features that we highlighted here, but those were definitely the big new features here. Now, if you're interested in it, Phaser is available at phaser.com. I O, as I mentioned earlier on, it is a completely open source project. The nice thing here too, is if you come here, there are an absolute ton of examples on here. Phaser has some of the best documentation you are going to find. So you got, um, 
examples on just about every aspect we looked at. So if you want to learn about particle systems, for example, it's not like there's one or two examples on particle systems. There's like 30. Um, so I got to give Phaser credit. It has amazing documentation that way or amazing samples to work from. You've also got solid documentation available here in the learn section and there's also full references to get up and going. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, Phaser itself is a completely open source project. The host, the source code is hosted over on GitHub. As you can see here, it is under photon storm forward slash phaser. Um, it is available under the MIT open source license, which frankly is probably my favorite open source license. It allows you to do just about whatever you want, short of suing them or holding them responsible for your incompetence. So it is really one of the best source code licenses out there. Another really nice thing about Phaser is it has now full TypeScript definitions that go along with it. So if you'd rather use TypeScript than uh, JavaScript, or if you are working in Visual Studio Code, you can also use that with your JavaScript for it to generate better and more context aware TypeScript or um, IntelliSense uh, suggestions for you. So that is a very nice feature to have as well. All right, so that is it. That is the update to Phaser 3.17.0. As you saw, we've got the new easier to use shader objects, new DOM game object um, to make it easier to integrate standard HTML into your game and the new camera masking system and a number of other little smaller features and improvements in the library. This framework is really coming a long way. Uh, 3.0 was released about a year ago and it's really improving quickly. Um, it is just an impressive framework and if you haven't checked it out yet, I highly recommend you do so. So let me know what you think of this update, what you think of Phaser in general. Have you moved up to Phaser 3 or are you still using 2.x? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.